Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So in my previous video, I have already discussed about transaction, commit and rollback concept in Snowflake. So if you check this particular document, what I prepared for studying Snowflake from scratch with AWS. So there, if you go a little bit below, here you will see there is a separate block section added, transaction, commit and rollback in Snowflake. Okay, so here I have provided the documentation link and here is the fundamental video where I have explained the simple concept related to transaction, commit and rollback in Snowflake, right? Now that one I discussed in Snowflake console. Now, let's see the same concept how we can implement in programming, okay? So, for that, what I am going to do, first I am going to drop a database if exist Ramu. So, if I just refresh here, you will see that database is not there. I am creating that database and I am using that database. And here I am basically creating a employee history table, okay? Which is having employee ID, employee joining date, department, salary and manager ID as schema, okay? Now, if I do select start from employee history, currently no data is there, right? Now, as part of this particular discussion, here I have written a code and in the middle of the execution, the code, we will intentionally fail and we will see what impact is happening in the Snowflake as part of transaction control, okay? So, here you can see import Snowflake connected as SF. I am doing user ID, password, account details. I have provided and I am creating the connection here and then here I am creating the cursor using this particular connection, okay? And then here I am executing some simple queries like use this warehouse, use this particular compute warehouse as uh, resume if it is suspended, then use this particular database, use this particular role and use this schema like that. Okay. And then here I am executing some insert queries in our employee history table, what we just now created. Okay. And in the employee history table, what I did here, if you observe this particular code, in this particular line here i have intentionally written a wrong code okay here if you check first second third and fourth fourth value if you observe this one i have given a string but in our snowflake first second third fourth fourth column is basically salary column which should be a number so here what will happen if i start executing this particular python script in this particular insert query execution the code will throw error and due to that exception the code will come out with the exit code one okay and what will happen that because by default whatever insert happened earlier that will be saved so partial loading will happen or partial data insertion or data ingestion will happen that is all these records which we executed as insert query before our error that will be remaining in our snowflake table but after we got error these queries will not be executed and it will be partially loaded data kind of okay so let's see that so if I just execute, see, let's start from employee history, currently nothing is there. All I will do, I will run this particular code, okay? But this code will fail because here I have not given user ID password, so I will just provide that. So I have provided my user ID password as usual here. It, it is expected that this job will fail because user ID we have not provided earlier. So I'm just running the same code again. And basically this time the code will fail in this this execution so these four records you should be seeing in our snowflake table okay so here you can see snowflake connection error numeric value so is not recognized because in our schema that particular column is salary column which should be a number data type right and we are trying to ingest string type so obviously it will not work so here four rows will be inserted first row having the value 8 then 12 then 3 and then 4 let's see so if i do see let's start from employee history here you will see 8, 12, 3 and 4, these 4 employee IDs are ingested, okay. And after that in the next query, in the next insert query, which is basically this one, here we got error and that way our code came out of the execution with exit code 1, okay. Now that is basically kind of partial ingestion and that's where the importance of transaction control, okay. Transaction, commit and rollback, all those concepts comes, right. That is, we should not be doing something partially. If among execution of all these insert queries one by one, if I am getting error in any single insert query, it should be rolled back. Okay. Not a single insert query, it should be having effect in our table ultimately. That's what the concept says, right? So now let's see how we can implement the same in this particular Python program. Okay. 
So for this demo, what I did, I created a separate table so that you will be not having any confusion. I created a table with employee history two, okay, and employee ID, employee joining date, department, salary, manager ID, same kind of schema I kept, and I will just execute that here table created. And if I do select star, currently no data is there, and this is the code what I am going to execute. It is basically same code, only difference is in the insert query instead of employee history now i have given employee history 2 as the table name okay and here also i kept the same issue or same mistake in this particular insert query where in the salary column which is number data type we are trying to insert the string data type okay so here again in this particular insert query execution it will fail okay but earlier in the first demo we have seen that when the code is breaking in this particular execution all these previous queries whatever it has executed that effect is remaining in our table okay but if we enable transaction control it should be doing rollback and not a single record should be there in our table once the code come out as error okay so let's see that so here i am executing all of them and i am closing the cursor anyway so i will just copy this code i will delete this code and paste that here same code only thing I will change, I will just provide my user ID and password. So I have provided the user ID password before running the code. Let me just show you if I do select start from employee history 2. Currently no data is there. And let's just run the code. And here again, you can see we got the same error. Numeric value Sotudra is not recognized. Okay. But this time, if I do select star from employee history 2, we should not see any record. Because as soon as in this particular insert query, we got error, all the previous insert queries basically became rolled back. Okay. Why? The reason is very simple. Here I added one extra parameter. And that is auto commit equal to false. Okay. This is the most important parameter. Okay, remember this that if you want to apply transaction control in your query, if you are executing that query from Python Snowflake connector, then you have to enable this option auto commit equal to false. Okay, that way it will not be doing auto commit. Once after the execution of all this insert query, I am doing cursor.close, then only all the queries will be saved. Okay, so cursor.close is basically acting like commit. Okay, and all these insert queries. While executing, if any of the single execution, if it is failing, then it will be doing a rollback. That's the simple concept. So I'll be providing all these codes in the description box or in the comment section as usual. If you want, you can go through that. This is all for my this video. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of all latest videos. Thank you.